Hello, so game development is hard and the process to create a game is long and complex. So we need a plan and maybe something like a roadmap which can outline every step of the way. Now I've been developing within Godot for 6 years now and over this time I've been working to perfect the perfect development roadmap for myself as a solo developer. And today I want to share it with you. My goal for this video isn't just to lay out the roadmap but to also break it down and explain in detail each step of the way. Along with providing you with the most important advice which I have learned during the time I've spent developing games. So subscribe to help you to push this video to other aspiring game developers and let's begin. So the first stage is the concept building stage. This is the very beginning of a crazy but truly a very fulfilling development journey in which you are about to embark on. It all starts with an idea, but once you have an idea pop into your head that you can't stop thinking about or maybe you've even started planning out the entire future of the game in your head, you know you have begun this wonderful journey. But it is very important we don't just start developing the project now since we have this great idea. We must create a foundation for our game. Just like you can't build a tower without foundation, it'll be really hard to build a game without foundation. But how do we create this foundation? Well, in my opinion, the best way is really, really simple. Just grab a paper and on this paper list out the core features that your game is 100% going to need. Take your time and don't rush this part because soon you'll see why it is so important. Then create some very simple and reasonable goals, like finishing a prototype or creating a grappling hook feature. But you may ask, why such simple goals? Well, because our mindset going into this project should be to focus on the simplest final game we can think of, basically just the core mechanics. Because all those extra features which will add to the game aren't too important until we have created the core of our game. Trying to create a perfect full project from the start is going to be overwhelming for any developer, so it is best to create the must needs of your project then after work on implementing all those extra features which are going to make your game unique in such a special way. So how do you decide the simplest final product for your game? Well just look at the core features you listed out on that paper, and that is your simplest final product. But be sure to note this down because we will come back to this concept a bit later in the roadmap. Lots of people try to really overcomplicate the concepting stage, but the concept in your mind is going to change, so in my personal experience, it has been best for me to keep the concepting stage extremely simple. But with that being said, another thing I want to mention is how important a digital organization system is going to be throughout this entire process. I recommend either Notion or Trello for this, as I have had great experiences with them, and they are both completely free. But for now, you can start by organizing what we just wrote out on that paper, then maybe a place to organize other things like to-dos, a place to take notes, and whatever else it may be. But that's basically it for the concepting stage. I know it seems very simple, but once you've got your concept and a plan, we can move into the prototyping stage. I like to think of this stage as the blueprint stage. And why the blueprint stage? Well, because during the prototyping stage, we are creating many basic projects, in which we will come back to all throughout development. Why do I say many projects? Well, when prototyping, we aren't working within one project, and that is a huge mistake I see so many developers make. But we are actually creating a new project for each different core mechanic. So for example, you'll need a separate project for the inventory prototype, then a separate one for the combat prototype, and so on. So take each core feature you listed on that paper and work to create a separate prototype project for each feature. This stage here, in my opinion, will be the the hardest stage on the entire roadmap. And the best piece of advice I can give you for this is to think of each new project as a whole different thing. Try your best not to relate them. Don't even think to yourself, how is the inventory system going to work with the combat system? Just create a separate project with a working inventory system and a separate project with a working combat system. Then once you've created a separate prototype project for each core feature you listed, we will then create another prototype project. Now this may sound like a lot, but remember, we will be coming back to these projects all the time throughout the development stage, so it is very important. But back to what I was saying, in this new project, basically take all the different prototype projects and use them to recreate each core feature within this new project, to create kind of like a final prototype type project which will consist of all the core features working together in a single project. So back to the example from earlier, this is where you would learn to make the inventory and the combat system work together. Another thing to keep in mind as you recreate each feature is to look at them in depth and see what you can improve about them. Because remember, we aren't developing for perfection, but it is important that we are always looking to improve things as we go. So now that we have our prototypes, it is very important to cover this weird looking stage at the bottom. The reason it is so long and spans across so many different stages is because it is the feedback stage. And as soon as you have completed a prototype, feedback starts to become really important. And you should seek as much feedback as possible throughout the rest of the game's development. Now, I'm sure we all know what feedback is, but there are some things that I think you should keep in mind while processing feedback. Firstly, good feedback and bad feedback are both really good things as long as they are honest feedback. Because good feedback is obviously good and bad feedback is going to help you to improve the game where maybe you can or can't see an issue. For example, if 5 different people make a bad comment about an aspect, you may be upset but now you're really in a better position than you were before, since you are aware and know where the project can be improved. 
But following up with that, just taking the feedback blindly and making changes because someone said something isn't good. If someone tells you they don't like an aspect, don't just go and change it, but think about it. And if you really like the aspect and think it fits, keep it. Just because someone tells you something doesn't make them right. It's your game, so develop the aspects you want to develop. But I guess what I'm trying to say is just think about what others are telling you because it can be a very helpful insight into how the game is being received. And in my opinion, the best places to seek feedback are Discord and Reddit. Trust me, Reddit is great because they will give you true, honest feedback, which is the most beneficial feedback. So yeah, basically just know that you should be seeking feedback consistently throughout the rest of this process. But now that we have our concept and built the prototypes, we are able to actually start the true development stage. I like to think of the development stage as the construction stage. It is the stage where we are actually going to bring our project to life. And since we already have our foundation and blueprints, it is time to start the construction. Now, don't get overwhelmed because honestly, in my opinion, the development stage is the most fun, especially since we've got the hardest part out of the way when creating the prototypes. But when you first move into the development stage, it is important to focus on creating what we went over earlier, the simplest final product. So once again, we can recreate our final prototype project while looking for ways to improve each feature. But since we are now in the true development stages, we need to start integrating the art and audio for each feature. So as you implement each feature into your project, focus on creating art and audio for that feature as well. So we should end up with a project that looks like an improved version of the final prototype project along with having art and audio. But this project here is what you call your simplest final product because it is your game, but in its simplest form. I like to call it our base project. Now I know throughout this entire process, you have daydreamed about all the fun little features you wanna add and well, now it is actually that time. Since we have our base project, we need to work on implementing all the extra features which are gonna make our game into the game we have dreamed about it being. And and to be honest, there isn't any special process, it is basically just picking a feature you want to add and implementing it. But there are some things I can tell you which should really help you with this process. Firstly, like I have mentioned before, don't try and make things perfect. It is usually impossible, and even if somehow it is possible, it'll take way too long and lead you to literally hating game development. So just try and make it work, and you can always come back and fix things up in the future. Secondly, be sure to create copies of your project consistently and keep them organized. I would usually say after each new feature, make a copy of the project before you start working on the next. Just so in case something terrible happens, you don't lose all the progress you've made. Now, during development, there will be tasks which you will enjoy much more than others. And you've worked so hard to get to this point in the journey, so you don't want to just fall into the trap of finishing all those tasks that you enjoy and leaving yourself with only the tasks you don't enjoy to look forward to. Because in most cases, this will lead you to burnout. So in a sense, you really need to try and spread out the task you enjoy throughout the development so you always have a task coming up which you are looking forward to. A task which can help motivate you through those tasks you don't like as much. Also remember to only work on one task at a time. And this is actually a big downfall for so many developers because when you get to this part of the development journey, you are so excited. But it is very important to not get ahead of yourself. So pick a feature you want to implement and implement it before moving on to the next feature. Don't ever work on two features at the same time because trust me, it'll just cause trouble. And something to help with all of this a lot is something we went over earlier in the concepting stage, an online organization tool. For example, let's look at this Trello board. I can create a card for each task and within that card break it down to help my mind simplify that task. Then I can separate those tasks into different sections like the backlog currently working on and the completed task. And if you ever randomly come up with a feature you may want to add, just add it to the board and expand on it later. But remember to only work on one task at a time and try to spread those fun tasks out. Okay, moving on from that and talking about errors. When you're developing, you are going to 1000% come across errors and you may get confused or even be so lost on how to go about something. But when you can't seem to understand a concept, there's no shame at all in turning to an online tutorial for help. At least there isn't if you do it the right way. Now I've mentioned this before, but tutorials can either be detrimental or so beneficial. It really just depends on how you use them. If you watch a tutorial and blatantly copy the code to your own project, then it'll be detrimental to your journey since it will lead you to almost relying on tutorials for everything. But if you truly watch a tutorial and take notes, ask questions, create sample projects to try and implement the idea yourself, and really, really try and understand why things work the way they work, then tutorials may just be the best way for you to learn. But again, there is absolutely no shame in turning to a tutorial. I will sit here and openly tell you that there are many times where I need to look up how to do something, and that is the beauty of the internet. But I always make sure I am understanding the concept and why things work before I implement the concept into my own projects. Now lastly for the development stage, be sure to focus on all aspects of game development evenly because they are all equally as important. For example, don't get carried away developing that you just completely forget about the audio because you'll end up finishing your game then realizing, oh wait, now I need to make audio for every aspect of this game. You'll be very disappointed and very overwhelmed and most likely try and rush it. This happened with me personally with artwork. I would get carried away developing then I would have all this pixel art to create and getting behind in a major aspect makes things 10 times harder especially when you get behind in an aspect you aren't very good at 
But there is a good side to this story because more recently I stumbled across Skillshare. And for the past two months, I've been taking these two pixel art classes, which are really helping me to improve in my art and actually making me enjoy the art process much more. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but I am a true believer in the work Skillshare is doing. I mean, they are the largest online learning community for anybody as they have thousands of classes led by industry experts in basically every industry. From things like drumming or photography, or maybe you even need to learn engineering mechanics for some reason. Skillshare for sure has it, but Skillshare is expensive especially useful for learning each aspect of game development, from programming, design, art, animation, audio, productivity, and so much more. And by more, I mean if you can name it, then Skillshare probably has an expert in said industry who created a top-notch class for you. So like I said, I was making my way through two different classes, one of those being the Master Pixel Art and A Sprite class by Incomass, and the other one being Pixel Perfection by Mastafa. They are both providing to be extremely helpful, and I am so grateful for it. And honestly, if you are struggling with Pixel Art, then I hands down recommend those two classes for you. But Skillshare also has learning paths, which are perfect. Learning paths are an organized consecutive class collection to help you master a specific skill. For example, do you want to become a freelancer? Well, there is a nicely built learning path for that. But again, whatever skill you may be looking for, I am more than positive a talented expert has created a class covering it. And do you want to hear the best part about all of this? Well, the first 500 people to use my link in the description and pinned comment will receive one month free trial of Skillshare. So join Skillshare and get started today, and trust me, you won't regret it. So once the development of your game is finished, congrats, you have completed your game, and this is a massive achievement, so be sure to celebrate. But you actually haven't completed the full process yet. For the longest time, I believed once I finished developing the game, I was done. But no, the polishing stage is so important. Within the polishing stage, you will go back through the entire project and try to improve whatever you can. And this isn't just glancing through the project, but truly breaking every line of code down, just looking for anything and everything that can be improved. You also need to try and find as many bugs as you can and receive as much feedback as possible. The best way to truly understand how others feel about the game is to watch others play it. See how they interact with the environment. Is there anything that is confusing to them? Do they understand the UI? Do they stumble across any bugs? And so on. If there is an aspect or something that multiple people act weird or confused around, then maybe you should think about going back and fixing it to make it easier for the player to understand what to do. I know this sounds so simple, but doing this can save you so much trouble for when you release the game. Because always remember, the first impression to a player is important. And the more bugs you can fix and the less confusing you can make the game before it is released, the better you'll make that first impression for those players. So if you are a newer developer, I wouldn't be worried about this section at all. So for this video, I'll keep it really brief. Because as a new developer, you can't worry about the results of a launch. Instead, you should be so proud of yourself for completing a game. Did you know that a majority of game developers never finish a single game? So you are now a minority and you've done something that most don't do. So no matter the outcome of the launch, continue to learn and improve maybe take a bit of time off, and when that next great idea comes to you, start work on another project, but remember to never ever try and rush it. Now, I have yet to mention marketing in this video since I have focused this video towards newer developers, and I think it is important to focus on completing projects and learning the process than to try and sell projects. But if you do decide to try and market the game, get creative with it. And the only thing I will tell you now is to create a professional aesthetic Steam page for the game and gain as many wishlists as you possibly can. And you can do this by starting to market the game early in its development stages. Market for free on social media. YouTube would be a perfect place to start. And doing this will help you to do two things. It will give you access to feedback all throughout the game's development, and it will also help you to start building a fan base for the game. But again, remember not to worry about the results of a launch because all indie developers who have hit big don't ever hit big on their first few games but they do hit big on their seventh game after they've shown that consistency to keep on improving and keep getting creative even when the results weren't there. The most important thing to succeed in game development is a passion for it combined with a consistency to improve at it. But there we are, we have made it to the end of the road. Congratulations, when you get to this point you'll look back and be so happy and proud that you finished the game, but sad at the same time that the journey has come to an end. It all started with us creating a concept, turning that concept into a prototype, then us making that prototype come to life as our simplest final product, developing that simplest final product to something that has so much life, then polishing everything up a bit and publishing our game for everyone to see. A very condensed version of what we covered today, but it is the route that I think all developers should take. If you are thinking about starting this journey or have already started, then I wish you the best of luck and remember to never give up. If things get hard, just work to improve and improve and improve, and soon you'll be creating things you've never even imagined you could. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'd love to help support you in your game development journey because I know how rewarding it can be. And I want everyone to feel the same joy game development has brought me for the past six years. But thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to help you to push this video to other aspiring game developers. And until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless and bye-bye.